Welcome everyone to the 24-hour Intuition Marathon live here at InterAccess 101 and streaming live from Facebook. We're really glad that you're here with us today. I'm Lori Wilson, the founder of InterAccess 101 and your host for these 24 consecutive hours. So again, we're just thrilled that you're here with us and hope that you'll be able to just jump in and out on whatever topics interest you and uh, have a lot of fun with us. And if you've already enrolled for the uh, marathon, uh, then you will have access to the replay as uh, about 24 hours after it's done. So the next hour and every hour after that until 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Saturday, we are going to be doing the same type of format. The format goes like this. So the first 10-15 minutes I'm going to be teaching uh, a topic about intuition. You've seen the outline on the uh, class registration or on the class schedule. So there's a different topic every hour that I'll be going over giving you tips and pointers for your own intuition development and getting that all honed up. Then after that the, we'll open up the floor and you can type in the chat boxes whether you're watching this from our um, Zoom meeting room on the in the classroom itself from your student dashboard or whether you're watching it from Facebook Live. The second 15-20 minutes will take your questions. Things that are on your mind, in your heart, about the topic, about intuition in general. So though that's when we'll be taking questions about, the, uh, about intuition in, at hand. So after we answer that or have that bit of a chat or dialogue together, then we have at the bottom of the hour, every hour, we have a different guest, a special guest that I've, they're all just thrilled to come and spend time with us. They're going to be spending about 15, 20 minutes talking about their experiences with intuition. So I'll be interviewing them, chatting with them, asking them a, a few questions about their experience with intuition that they can help inspire us and educate us and give us uh, a couple of little pointers to get a leg up on our own intuition. So next, uh, just as we're finishing up the hour, we're going to draw two names from the people who are live on the event with us each hour. And Grandmother, the wonderful spirit guide that I have been channeling since 1989, will channel a personal message for those individuals. And so you have an opportunity to be chosen for that uh, personal message uh, with the super special formula that Stuart and I have developed to uh, make sure that we're, we're drawing names randomly. Then, speaking of draw, toward the end of the hour, every hour, we're going to be giving away three different prizes. So this generous offer mirrors the celebration that we are feeling. We're celebrating International Day of Peace, which is always a wonderful thing to enjoy. We're celebrating our, our human evolution period. We're celebrating our intuition period. And as Grandmother says, if enough people could truly learn how vast the invisible worlds are and to learn to trust themselves and their own intuition more, this world would change rapidly in very positive ways. And that's why we're here. That's why we're here today and here with our guests and here with you. Peaceful, clear, calm, intuitive people can balance chaos and drama and we can facilitate change. So it's time, it's time, right? For intuition to just really shine and for you to trust yourself first. And we're here to help you along the way. All right, well, Stuart and I have had our tiny little stretch break, which we need every hour. So let's turn our attention to the topic of the hour, to our guests, to your questions, and let's have some fun. Glad you're here. Well, hello and welcome back. I'm Laurie Wilson and we are here at the 24 hour intuition marathon streaming live from Facebook and also from our site. And every time I get up to <laughs> take a stretch, I feel like my chair is in the wrong place. So Stuart can just assure me that I don't need to move anywhere. Then we'll be ready to go. Um, so I just always feel like I'm just ahead talking. Is there, is there more of me? Fix me, please. <laughs> I just feel like it's just a head talking to you. Not that I, there you go, perfect. <laughs> when you see like my black shirt and the black chair, it's like this head popping out of. So there, now I can relax because 
I am here. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. We are here and, and doing our lovely hourly event. We have so much fun. The hours are just flying on by. We're going to be talking in this hour about the biggest challenges to using your intuition. So we've already touched on a couple of different challenges, people bringing their wonderful questions here uh, to the live event. Uh, we're already starting to ask like, well, how do I do this? Or how could I trust that more? Or what, what would be uh, a way to get past this within your mind's eye? So as seasoned people practicing your intuition, or maybe as we've talked about earlier, just kind of tucking our toe in the water and saying, um, I think I have intuition, I want like to try and practice that. And then feeling like, oh, well, I don't know what to do. It's I'm over my head. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what this is going to be like for me. And so before we get started, I'd actually be curious for those of you who are listening. Um, <laughs> Jennifer Lynn is asking, are you going to be awake for 24 hours, Lori? It's like, yeah, of course I am. And we, uh, we both are, my husband Stuart and I, and we have four kids. We are no strangers to a 24-hour cycle. It's no problem at all. So yes, definitely we are going to be awake. And we're the hourly. Oh, and, and then I have this. So much fun. <laughs> I have this little lag streaming yeah. part of me that pops in. I, I don't even know what happens. But so, yes, we will be awake. And uh, the sound isn't very clear this hour. Somebody is sharing as well. So uh, maybe it's because that other one was. Yeah. Is it better now? Amy, can you hear me better now? Maybe just type in yes or why. And if anyone else is having troubles hearing or, you know, something's not going right, uh, just type in your chat box and let Stuart know so we can adjust things. We, we don't want you just to intuit what I'm saying. We would love you to be able to hear. So Amy's saying much better. Awesome. I think, well, who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, Stuart will know, but I, I don't want to even know what's happening as far as when we stop one video, we have to go get onto the next video, at, like get into the next room, and then the video we just did for that hour has to save, and all kinds of things are happening behind the scenes. We think intuition is a hard world, but technology is much more complicated than intuition in my world. So glad, uh, glad that we're here, and yes, as you're saying, uh, Jennifer, it is a lot of talking. Um, I was, I was, I'm learning more and more about social media, how we're supposed to reach out and do all of these wonderful things and, and talk to people and my, my, it boggles my mind how we're, we are supposed to, I haven't quite learned how to do it yet because I am still grasping the concept that I'm supposed to do like a, a two minute post, or I think in Instagram, it's supposed to be a 10 second or 15 second post. It's like, I can't even say hello in 15 seconds. So I have to learn how to be shorter. So I thought, well, I don't want to talk for 15 seconds. I want to talk for 24 hours about what we love and what we teach and, and what makes the world go around in a very expanded, calm way. So welcome, welcome, welcome for everyone. And we're glad you're here. We're, as we talk about this concept of what are the biggest challenges using our intuition, I think that already the number one challenge that we have seen in our work in teaching over the last uh, 33 years is that you don't always know that you can trust that it's real. So using your intuition, connecting, receiving information, impressions, we just finished talking about all the different learning styles and how to plug into that information. The biggest challenge I've seen over the years is that we're not sure it's real. We're not sure what we're getting is real. I think conceptually we're getting to a point in our evolution and as humanity that we understand intuition is real, but we're not trusting what we're getting as real. I mean, we often talk about this, I feel like I'm making it all up. Well, again, this is one of the principles we encourage in our class. You, okay, great, take the first impression, and go ahead and just allow yourself to feel you're making it up. So that can be a big challenge. We, uh, you know, I think of the image of when you're trying to drive a car, you've got one foot on the gas and you're driving forward to move forward. But with intuition, often it feels like we've got one foot on the gas, but then we've got one foot on the brake too. And we're kind of doing this little dance of, uh, is this real? Is this not real? I'm, 
am I getting information or I am, but that doesn't make sense. So if we're doing this dance on the gas pedals and the brake with our intuition, it'll be more challenging. And a big part of that is trusting whether or not that information is real. So I think that's the biggest challenge that we have seen in people learning how to trust their intuition. So to solve that, if you could just assume everything you're getting is real, whether you understand it or not, and get used to going with that flow and just allowing yourself to practice um, kind of amplifying it and flowing with it. We call it in our line of work, track it. Track it a little bit further. Just go with it. Let it have its course. We will learn so many things if we just let things be by way of those intuitive impressions coming. The second thing that I think is the biggest obstacle, it wasn't originally, but as the years go by, the biggest obstacle I'm seeing these days, and I would say probably in the last 10 years, is that we are grabbing hold of paradigms that have existed for a lot of years, some of them, well, some of them hundreds of years, but we're, we're grabbing hold of paradigms about intuition, about energy, about negativity, about fear. We are using out-of-date paradigms as we're practicing. Um, and so what's important is that as you're learning how to use your intuition, as you're exploring it at this very, very exciting time where it's just so easy to plug in and tap into many sources of wisdom, that you have to make sure just like you would update your phone or your computer or your software or your wardrobe or your paint on your walls or your oil in your car, you have to update your paradigms around intuition as well. Because that piece of the puzzle that has fear embedded into it historically made sense. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more tomorrow morning when we have Lindsay Diamond as our guest. We're going to, it's like, please, can we just get rid of this fear paradigm? <laughs> and how do we do that? So we will talk about that. We also have a lot of information on our website already on some of the courses, the Stabilizing Fear um, webinar or ebook. We talk about um, the, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here because I can't remember them all. We have so many. So we, we talk about it in the intuition class. We certainly talk about it in the medical intuition class. We have two different webinars on there about actually updating your paradigms for intuition. So this is something that I've really uh, put some effort and time into doing over the last 10 years because I keep finding people with excellent skills really unfolding their intuition but then getting caught in this whole fear-based paradigm that is truly out of date, meaning what worked and made sense 10 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100, 150 years ago, there was a reason why we were fearful. There was a reason why we were um, worried about negative energies getting us. And again, I'm not going to get into that uh, right now, simply because we do have a whole hour dedicated to that uh, coming up tomorrow morning. And again, if you, you're not going to be around or you're sleeping in or having, having a commitment, uh, just you could catch it on the replay for sure. But if we, if we stick to old fear-based paradigms, that something bad's going to get me or um, something's going to attach itself to me or something's going to haunt me or bother me, well, that's the other one. We have a thinning of the veil, why spirits can't haunt you anymore. That's one of our, our ongoing classes. It's, it's, just, it's just out of date. Again, I, 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 I'm always hesitant to just come straight out and say it because so many of my colleagues, so many of our students, so many of my cherished friends um, are still using a lot of those paradigms of, you know, well, I have to protect myself. Or I have to surround myself with uh, this or that or, um, you know, I have this guide protecting me. And it's like, well, if that guide or that ritual for protection helps you focus so that you can go do your intuition work, that's great. But if we're actually gearing up and suiting up with everything under the sun to keep ourselves separate from what is my aunt, my question to them? What is what they're afraid of something's going to get them? Because what we're exploring is in invisible worlds, right? 
but what they don't realize is that as time's gone by and as we continue to to evolve and that veil that we've talked about already here in the in the uh, marathon that veil between the everyday walk around world and the invisible worlds it continues to thin and thin and thin that energy of negativity that started here on the earth anyways it, it just can't it doesn't really exist. Yes, of course, we have negativity and, and all kinds of horrible things happening in the day-to-day -day world. But within the spirit world, there's nothing that's going to get you out there. So again, I don't want to talk too much about that right now because we do have a whole hour dedicated to that tomorrow morning. And we'd love to have you come back and join in for that or again, catch that on the replay. So we've talked about one of the challenges is that trusting this isn't real. Out-of-date paradigms not recognizing your own style and honoring that and using your own style, which again, we've talked a fair bit in the last few hours about your own style. Are you receiving images? Are you receiving information auditorially? Are you receiving um, uh, information through your body? So once you understand your own style of receiving and can hone that and use that, then you can uh, use your style better. So that can be a really big challenge. Um, and so as we, uh, as, sorry, um, do I need to do anything? Okay, great. Um, the fourth thing that I can think about that is a big challenge, I just tried to pick up the, the top five challenges that I could think of, is that we're not practicing uh, going with the flow. We're not taking enough time to really allow the information, the intuitive information we're receiving to, to have a time to just kind of settle in or to, to follow it. Uh, as I said earlier, we use the word tracking a lot in our work, where you're not really tracking the information. You're not, you get an impression, but then you're, you're trying to understand it, or you're trying to close it down, or you, you don't get it, or it's not what you expected. So it's like getting this tiny little snippet of information and then deciding that it should be different and not even allowing it to come out into the fullness of whatever the exploration was going to be, if only we would just follow it a bit longer. So we have to allow ourselves to follow things a bit longer. And then the other part, well, there's two more quickly ones I could think of. I could go on probably for days thinking about obstacles, but another part that can challenge us when we're working with our intuition is that we're worried what other people are going to think about us or say or we don't have language to communicate what it is we're doing or what we're exploring, what we're excited about. Thankfully, as we've talked about with some of our earlier guests, that is changing. It's changing and, and becoming a lot more normal for people to be exploring a skill within ourselves that's innate and has been here since the beginning of time. So it's like, oh, phew, it's coming back out into fashion yet again. So we, we can not have to worry too much about that piece. And then the last part that I could think of that is a bit of a challenge is that we're not using our own, we're not structuring our, our way of approaching things. So when I say structuring, I mean structuring, I'm taking this seriously, I'm deciding where I want to go, I, I picked a, a source of wisdom I want to connect with, I know I'm going to draw or I'm going to write or journal or move. So you kind of pick how you're going to record the information or receive the information. And you, you use some ways to kind of plug in and tune in. And then having that opening and having that closing, that's the, the protocol or the routines I'm talking about. We don't want to control the content, but we need to set the stage. If you're going to host a dinner party, for example, you have to tell people where to go and you have to tell them what time to show up approximately. You have to tell them, you know, what to bring if they're supposed to bring something. Is it indoors? Is it outdoors? You kind of set the stage. So using your intuition is really no different. You've got to set that stage and have a bit of a routine. And as many of the guests already have shared, and even some of you sharing online as well, you, you want to get a bit of a familiarity with where you're going, and then it becomes easier and easier each time. Never be vested in the content, because that's for the sources of wisdom to share with us, but setting ourselves up so we can actually be ready to receive it that's your responsibility. It's a partnership between invisible information and you with the everyday world senses. We've got to meet kind of halfway.
So those are some of the pointers and tips for this hour about uh, what are some of the biggest challenges. Let's open up the, the floor and, and uh, see what kind of questions you would bring or what kinds of challenges you've had with your own intuition. And uh, we have lots of people, Melanie's here from Alberta. Welcome, Melanie. And we're really, really glad to, uh, to have all of our new friends coming and joining us here, especially as it gets into the wee hours, at least in Eastern Standard Time. But I know if you're out West, it's just early in your night. Mm -hmm. All right. So what kinds of thoughts are, who, the, for those of you who have listened, uh, or are listening in, what kinds of uh, challenges have you had? Or do you worry that you're going to have with your in intuition? Curious as you explore. Hi, Sophie. Sophie's saying, thanks for sharing your wisdom with me, Lori. Loved your pointers and tips on challenges. Okay, good. I think if we all know that we have the tips and, uh, not the tips, but that we have the challenges, then we can kind of feel a little less awkward, like maybe sharing about that or talking about that, then we can overcome that, right? Mm -hmm. Ellen's saying, hi, Ellen, uh, that trusting it is a big obstacle for you. So trusting what you're getting, yeah. Experience is going to be a good teacher, Ellen, and so if you can either write down or record or tuck away your own kind of private uh, information as you're getting it, you may tuck it away and two years later read it or, or listen to the audio or look at the picture you've drawn and say, oh my goodness, I actually, that was fitting for me. Um, or maybe you'll hear back from others if you're practicing with them. We have to make sure we're not attached to being right. Uh, if we're helping others with our intuition, but you'll get validation. The more you practice it, you will get enough feedback that will make you say, hey, there is something to this. So practice always uh, encourages us. Um, Adrian is saying protecting time for stillness each day to tap in. That's a big obstacle, just kind of carving out that time and bringing that uh, opportunity for stillness and I love that word Adrian like that stillness that quiet how do we access that what, that what we call that alpha brainwave pattern again which we'll talk about a little bit more when we're, we're chatting with Kelly Woodrow about what's the difference between our mind energy and our intuition hmm so, um, oh, these are great. See, so the challenges are rolling in. Uh, whoop, I missed one down there. Uh, just so you scroll it up for a quick sec. Um, Again, oh, sorry, sorry, the one challenge went away. I think it was something about timing. Uh, time is your challenge. Sophie's saying taking time to create the space, very, very hard. Uh, Nancy is joining us and saying, trusting my, I trust my intuition when I'm providing healings for others. However, I struggle listening to my intuition for myself. Any suggestions? If you want to bypass your own mind, which is, it's your mind, right? That's getting in the way. I would suggest that you write down questions as we talked about in an earlier exercise write the questions down that you'd like to have answered and just tuck them in an envelope seal them up or fold them up and then draw the question out and ask your guide any source of wisdom that you're connecting with to give you the information about this random piece of paper that you're holding that you don't know what the question is that way you will bypass your own mind and you'll see that that information will start flowing um, because you don't know, don't know the question. Better even yet, have some questions that you've asked and have some questions that other people have asked and kind of put them into a, a bit of an envelope or a pot and then kind of draw them and take time over the weeks to answer those. Don't open any of them until you've read them all and uh, until you've channeled or connected with the information from all of them, that's going to start the fun and the ball rolling really nice. And it's like, oh, how did I know that? It's like, well, you didn't, but your intuition and whatever source of wisdom you've plugged into did. And so that is a really helpful suggestion. So try those playful games. All right. Melanie's saying following the thought or feeling far enough to fully understand why something is being shared with me. Yes. So you've touched on that, Melanie, about what we were talking about earlier, that you're not taking the time to follow it through. What I would add to that as a reminder is that follow it through till you get a sense that it feels complete. 
or maybe you have a signal with your guidance or the sources of wisdom you're working with that it feels complete that we're done but don't try to understand it try not to be attached to understanding i say fondly in many of our classes that if you understand 50 percent of what you're getting from a guide or from um, the body or from a collective a lot of what we're being given intuitively is beyond our scope of understanding perhaps right now and so if we're attached to trying to understand it uh, to understand why something is being shared, understanding is not part of this work. So if you can kind of give yourself a break, let your mind know that its job is to pay attention and really follow and notice the nuances, we want to give it a job, but the job is not to understand. That would be like trying to, you know, somebody was hooking up a phone the other day and I was like, uh, one, I didn't want to understand what they were doing, but if I tried to understand what they were doing, before they even got here, or as they were halfway doing it, I'm never going to be able to understand. I need to allow it to unfold, and maybe later I would understand, but not during. That will help you a lot with that, okay? So you're welcome, Nancy. I'm glad that's a helpful suggestion. All right, are there questions? Uh, hey, Jocelyn, welcome, welcome. Glad you're here, and Laura May. I see two different screens now. Um, Laura May is saying, oh, is everything okay working? Are, are we good? We got her all set up? Awesome. Perfect. Um, Jocelyn is sharing with us the challenge is often that I'm attempting to connect or get information from one aspect of my being and another is answering. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's a really interesting challenge because it may be in that situation, Jocelyn, where you're trying to connect in with, let's say, for example, your body but maybe your higher self or uh, your soul self or again a relative or an ancestor from the past or maybe a guide is popping in or or some other source of wisdom so what i would encourage you to do is to honor if you're getting two different stories that's okay that's what you're getting but allow yourself we talk often in our classes and you're familiar with this exercise where if you had two different colors of pens you could say, okay, this is my body is sharing this information and wisdom, write it down or draw it, and then allow yourself to write down, oh, it feels like my soul or my spirit really wants to share or show me another piece of the puzzle. So rather than trying to kind of arm wrestle, which part gets the strongest voice is allow them both or maybe different aspects or you're doing that and then somebody else shows up and, and shares the information. So long as you know where it's coming from, then it won't be a struggle. It's like chairing a meeting. If we've ever been in a meeting, lots of people talking at the same time, uh, as long as we know who's talking and we record that down or we note it, then we can kind of keep that flow going. Okay. So thank you so much for sharing that, that important piece of the puzzle. In a few moments, we're going to have our guest, Andrew uh, Faka, join us. And I just wanted to make sure um, that we have answered most of your questions for, for right now. I know we could carry on, but we'd love to spend time with Andrew as well. Um, acting on intuition or applying intuition, do you have any tips for improving on this? Um, boy, that's a big one. Um, What I would say is if you spend time, if you go to a really quiet place within yourself and ask a couple of questions around, let's say your intuition's giving you some guidance about something, you might have supplementary questions to ask um, to, to get either more information or the whys or the wherefores so that you can feel more comfortable perhaps acting on your intuition. Because sometimes our intuition may also be a part of our mind you know, being nervous about something or, you know, jumping ahead and maybe we didn't ask about timing about something. Well, I know I need to do this, but is it, is it urgent? Is it today? Or, do, or can I allow myself to, uh, to take some time to do that? Okay. So I'm sorry, that's not really a very long answer, but that would be my initial thought. And Adrian's sharing that during an energy healing, you might be flooded with images of beings, geometry, and it's a relief that you don't need to understand it. Yes. And I think you've got a good point, uh, Adrian, and all of us can use this example where if we have multiple things happening at the same time, which is very, very common, 
than to just kind of find a way to language it. Oh, there's a lot of things happening at the same time. Multiple beings, lots of energy, lots of colors, lots of love. Then usually by stating what's so, what's happening, then things will either slow down or later on, once you're done, especially if you're doing it in the flow of healing, um, then later on you can kind of tease it apart, debrief with all those energies once you've made a note of what they are. And then you can kind of understand, oh, what were you doing? And what were you doing? What was that part, part for? What were those shapes about? You can always go back and debrief, okay? The guidance is always there. It's not going to go anywhere. All right. Well, wonderful, wonderful questions. Um, I'm glad that it was reframing the brain was helpful to you, Melanie. Thanks for sharing that. Let's take a moment, and I want to introduce our next guest, Andrew Faka. Uh, Andrew's going to be joining us, and Andrew has dedicated his whole life, actually, to helping people alleviate, like, suffering and any kind of afflictions they've had in a whole lot of different ways. Um, when, and I'm just, uh, actually, I, I wanted to read what I read before, or what we... we I'm just going to read this because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, one of the new advances that Andrew has is he's created a clearing session after having a medical intuition scan done for, for people uh, within his community or come for that uh, scan either done by myself or other people that I've trained. And this uh, session or this clearing session seems to have evolved from a different need. Andrew has referred hundreds of people uh, to, to us over the years. You have, thank you. And after having the medical intuition scan, people are advised to take that information uh, back to their healing team members. And I know I've seen, I've seen you on film do uh, healing sessions with the information that the client's body is providing for them. So this is wonderful that uh, you're doing this and the potential, Andrew says, now exists to quickly, yay, and efficiently let go of under, underlying issues, of the root issues, once we know what it is that's going on. So the, the session can be done at a distance as well. And so you can, you can look at the video if you're curious about what this distance healing or clearing session would be like. You can go to Andrew's website at healerman.com and uh, Andrew's actually hosting an upcoming event, a, a retreat weekend in the Niagara region in October, October 4th to the 7th. If you're local and you want to join in and perhaps even distance-wise, you could uh, ask Andrew about that as well and check in with his wonderful work. So, Andrew, we will love to have you join us here on screen and, and a big welcome to you. It's been been a while. I think last time we chatted, you were in a diff different city. Big, big welcome to you, Andrew. Thanks for showing up and uh, for being here with us at this time late night. So you've been doing a ton of things with energy and intuition for a lot of years. Yeah. What, what's your favorite part? You know what? It's really interesting. Uh, a friend of mine just the Joe Dispenza uh, event that he's doing out in Niagara Falls um, for the last week and they did a group healing session on uh, with 1300 people on 300 people and she said one of the things she said that he had said to her was heal others and you will heal yourself and that's kind of where it started for me in a dream 20 years ago. It was a lucid dream, and it was literally written on a gravestone. And it said, heal others and you will heal yourself, and first, but first you must learn. And I was a businessman at that time, and I had 150 employees, and I was making all sorts of money. And I gave up that world to do healing work. And so, yeah, I had, I not only had to trust the intuition, but I had to trust, uh, you know, the, the messages I was getting in dreams because apparently I was too busy in my day to day life to listen in. So it, the message had to come to me in my dreams. You know? It was piped in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm, I'm telling you, I got the same message and the same guidance that Joe, Joe has, but he's doing great work. I mean, imagine that he's, he's at 1600 people show up for an event. Wow. So, that's a lot that's, of people, a lot of healing energy. Lot of people. I'm doing the same thing in Niagara Falls and you know, uh, 
if if uh, we have 24 people there, I'm thinking, hey, that's great. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, we just do things more locally. That's lovely. Yeah, well, yeah. But um, I, I see one day the potential to do that. But uh, sure. yeah, and you know, it was um, it was interesting. Uh, we started back. This is the 10th anniversary of Voyage to Betterment. Yeah, um, tell, tell the audience what that voyage to betterment is, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the movie, the movie where we met. So, um, I, I just wanted to create a movie to show people with their own eyes. Now, this is going back ten years ago, so a lot more exists now, and uh, YouTube wasn't really around ten years ago. So it you was created it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I, I wanted to make a movie to show people with their own eyes some of the healing potentials that exist. So we took a, a group of regular people and we put them through um, uh, a 30 day challenge. And first we fed them like, uh, we had everybody eat uh, what is now known as like a longevity diet, which would be basically a plant-based diet, but you could eat meat or, or uh, fish once a week. So it's, it's kind of, um, similar to the longevity diet, and we took before and after blood tests, and they were able to lower their risk of developing illness significantly, and they grew four years biologically younger in 30 days. That's what we were able to test. And but and then it got interesting when we exposed the group to uh, a few healers and the medical intuition work of Lori Wilson. <laughs> and, uh, so it was great because we put Lori to the test. We had uh, a group of eight people just write their names in an envelope and I couriered the envelope to Lori and all she did was hold on to the envelopes with the people's name inside the envelope without looking inside. And we made sure she couldn't look inside. Oh, you had like cardboard and <laughs> tape and you had like everything in there. <laughs> yeah. So Laurie had no idea how old the person was, what the gender was, what the issues were. And she wrote a detailed medical report for each person. And I remember when Laurie showed up at the house and we filmed this scene, it was just silence in the room. Do you remember that, Lori? <laughs> I do, I do. Well, I, and part of that silence was mine because to be honest, we've taught hundreds of practitioners how to do medical intuition. And I always right. say to them, oh, do this blind envelope thing. That'll be really good for your trust. But until you asked me to do it on film, for film, <laughs> I'd never done it. I just was too busy with appointments. So I thought, oh, this is going to be the one where I get it all wrong, right? And then I'm going to be filmed. But it, yeah. turned out, it turned out beautifully, and yes, yeah. people were quite astounded what their yeah. bodies had to share. That's exactly that. When they opened up there, because the medical report was attached to each envelope, and then we opened it up and gave it out to each person, and as they're reading, they were just in shock. You know, and some people were brought to tears and they just could not believe that some lady in a distant city could hold on to an envelope. When I asked them to do it, they thought I was crazy. I'm like, just humor. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and so we did, we did several experiments like that in Voyage to Betterment. So it's, uh, it's available for viewing online for five bucks if you search Voyage to Betterment or my name, Andrew Faka. Um, well, and you yeah. had a lot of a lot of celebrities, doctors, and practitioner, yeah. and David Hawkins, and yeah, Doctor David Hawkins, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. like, um, I mean, he uh, he was uh, uh, to me, anyways, uh, one of the most enlightened people that ever walked the planet, and mm -hmm. it was uh, the only film he ever uh, agreed to be part of, so it was quite the honor. Yeah, and, uh, and then the work just kept evolving from there. But it was kind of interesting. I spent like a fortune in making that movie. And, uh, you know, this was a few years before kids could make uh, a movie on an iPhone, um, you know, <laughs> in high definition for yeah. free. You know? yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> but uh, you were really committed to that instruction of doing what uh, you were told. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you when you feel um that it's a calling uh money doesn't make a difference you will do everything basically you know i gave up like a lucrative career in business to work for free for the last 20 years it feels yes. like you know and uh i i don't have any regrets because uh 
I mean, uh, if you go to healerman.com, you'll see that there's uh, all sorts of uh, testimonials from medical and holistic doctors about the healing work and how yeah. effective it's been. I did, a, I did a group healing session one time on 40 doctors. And uh, yeah, and in, and in 20 minutes, uh, 25 reported like a significant elimination uh, or an elimination or significant improvement of conditions. Wow. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's, so it's real, it's working. It's yeah. real and there's videos online because again, people need to see it to believe it. They but, do. Yeah, but you know what? I, I realized when my friend uh, messaged me today and she said 1600 people showed up for the group healing work with Joe Dispenza. I'm like, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you got to get them to come over to your workshop now or find yeah. a way to let more people know about it. Well, they'll be listening through here. So, well, yeah. And the thing, the thing is, it's uh, uh, if you go see Dr. Joe, it's 2000 bucks. You come see mine. It's like 500 bucks and it's at a five star resort and it's all inclusive with food. So. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> well, then so. definitely people should check that out. Yeah. I wanted to ask, and I noticed yeah. that Diane was, Diane has sent an audience saying, thank you for your dedication. And oh, so God. We're well, pre appreciating that. Yes. Yeah, so, well, thank you for thanking me. Mm -hmm. We're talking in this hour, Andrew, about challenges and certainly challenges to, to bringing life's work forward is, is one of maybe a, part, a huge part of the path you've learned. But challenges right. to trusting and how have you overcome some of those challenges of trusting to follow your intuition, follow your instincts, which obviously you're being very guided by? Yeah, you know what? It's not that easy. <laughs> well, that's honest. <laughs> Especially when it pretty much cost me everything I own, you know? And I, I remember this was uh, 2000 and, uh, uh, 2011, I believe, and I was doing film screenings in Sedona and in Prescott, Arizona. Okay. And, and uh, I climbed a mountain um, uh, called Cathedral Rock in Sedona, and it's beautiful. And I was full of doubt uh, because here I am spending all the money I have. Very few people buy DVDs, but people were coming out in droves to the film screenings. But it's it's costing me money, like to to travel to show the the film. Sure. sure. Uh, you know, so it's kind of like for everybody that saw the film would cost me another 10 bucks. You know? It's like so, an investment so, in, in getting the work out. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? The beautiful thing is probably, uh, you know, a few thousand. And because I showed some of the local healers from uh, Guelph to Larry Steele, who was one of my teachers that created Boss and Atherton Drenth. And, and it's such a blessing that I was able to refer people to them because I know a ton of people that healed in their presence. I thought I, when I was making the movie, I, I was doing the work, but I was a closet healer. So I just wanted to refer people to like other reputable other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and so um, hence your website's called Healer Man. <laughs> you know what? I said, nope. screw it. Screw it. I, I just, I'm not hiding anymore. Okay, good. You know, uh, a friend of mine, she brought her daughter for a healing session and her daughter had just broke her arm and um, they were going to put a cast on the next morning and we did this healing session. I just happened to have a group healing session going on mm -hmm. and the whole group felt all sorts of heat, uh, heat happening and the swelling went away and she was able to sleep without a problem. This is a six year old daughter and she really didn't need the cast after that, but they had already made the appointment for the cast. And like in three weeks, they took it off. She was fine. But her, the little daughter said to her mom, like uh, a few months later, she said, mom, if I got sick, would you take me to the doctor? And uh, her mom said, well, yeah, of course I would. And the six-year-old said, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd take me to the healer man. Oh, so that's where the, the, the term, the term <laughs> and I had already healerman.com so after I heard that story I'm like okay that's my guy I love it I love it this is this is the work I do and yeah. I'm just gonna say it out loud <laughs> yeah but now now I, I just need to reach more people and uh, okay. I remember when I was in Sedona I climbed a mountain because 
here I am in 2011, I'm doing these film screenings. I showed up for Dr. Hawkins um, uh, lecture, but I was full of self doubt. I was like, really, is this what you want me to do? And again, I have no regrets because I know I sent a thousand people to see you, Larry and Atherton, and they got the benefit from it. So, um, but anyways, you know, when it costs you everything you own, you can't help but have doubts, you know? That human part, for sure. Yes, right. So I remember climbing a mountain, and it's a real busy place. And when I got there, for whatever reason, I was completely alone, and it's this most scenic area in Sedona. And so I got up to the top of the mountain, and I was like, all right, God, is this what you want me to do? You know, I just, I just surrendered completely. I'm like, I was like, crying almost like is this what you want me to do and then something happened that just uh, I'll just describe it it all happened in two seconds there were two hawks that flew over or falcons there was this big yellow butterfly that floated right in front of me from across the way a hummingbird came and floated and looked right at me Right. All the and it went complete. Everything went completely silent. Like the wind stopped, and it all happened in two seconds. Yeah. And it was like kind of like a slap in the head. And it was like, have you not seen all the miracles? Like because so many had happened, even in the creation of the film. And it was like, okay, thank you. And the, the answer was, is yes. Yeah. And, in, in those two seconds, all the words came to me to what to say at the film screening in Sedona and in Prescott, and there were like hundreds of people that showed up, and it was a, it was a blessing to do that, and uh, my greatest joy is to share the word, and uh, you know, let it, let it take its course, but you know, trusting your intuition, I didn't trust my intuition back 20 years ago when I got the dream, you know? And not only that, I was gifted with business capacities and I haven't put them, frankly, I haven't put them to good use. Right. But well, fortunately, you, Joe Dispenza has. So there's like, you, you better know, take Joe out for lunch. <laughs> thousands of people doing this now. And, and it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. So God willing, I'll do more in the future. Well, God willing, I'm sure you will. And we want everybody who's listening to check out uh, Andrew's site, healerman.com, and, and look at those videos and, and engage in some of the wonderful experiences with healing and, and appreciate, you know, appreciate the, the pioneering efforts that you've put forward, uh, really trusting your intuitions, having the challenges, but having those moments of the butterfly and the hawk and the, uh, the mountain saying, yeah, you're you know, on the right track. Yeah, and, I, and, and I've had a ton of them. I've had butterflies land on me all the time, but it's, it's interesting. You know, you go six months without a butterfly landing on you, and you're like, what, what am I doing wrong? What, what the heck? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, let's send butterflies your way <laughs> as it gets colder. Butterflies still go find Andrew. Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. But one of the, one of the things that um, has been advancing in doing this work, and I love doing the work, whether it's in group or one-on-one, -on -one, but it's what's happening, it's, it's almost like a new modality is evolving every time I do the work. And so I just go in with a completely blank slate, and then – something happens in some capacity I'm gifted the knowledge or what to do in order to help that specific person. Right. So I want to start getting this on film and I want to bring it out because we need to see it to believe it. Yeah. yeah. I, I know it's not about me and it's like, you know, God's plan is like, well, Andrew, if you, you don't do it, Joe's going to do it or somebody else will do it. So don't worry about it. I so think just, you and Joe might've been brothers in another life or something. <laughs> <laughs> you better check that out. <laughs> uh, you know, but it, it, it's really, in business, it was a lot easier to trust my intuition because it was like, if you have 150 employees and 10 managers, um, they're all going to tell you what to do. And you have to have the wherewithal to make decisions quickly. Yeah. And you don't have enough time to think about it. Yeah. One of the things about doing the healing work and being on your own and doing this, there's too much time to think. Yeah. It really, 
and, well, you know, then your our head can get in the way and it's like, do yes. I do like the flow and how does this work and what's the vision and where is it all coming from? And I'm sure that the, the, the people you've been working with have been kind of drawing and pulling you forward energetically. So it's kind of like sometimes we're guided to do something and we don't even know what's, what's, am I being pushed? Am I being pulled? Am I driving this bus? Right. And, and how's that all working? Right. And, and one of the other challenges I find is I don't want to disappoint anyone. <laughs> oh, gee, you and everybody else on the planet, we just have to get past that one because I that can get in the way. I, I, I know because it's like you get this intuition, and then when somebody confirms it, I just had a lady say to me um, today, she's a healer, and uh, I, I did a session on her like last week, and she's like, I'm referring all my clients to you. And I'm like, she's like, I'm sure you get that all the time. I'm like, no, thank you for telling me. Thank you, thank you for confirming that. You know? awesome. Well, it shall come back, and hopefully, you can keep that balance of getting the word out there and the work out there, and you know, spreading the work with others and and bringing some back home for yourself as well. Um, yeah. I want I want to thank you for coming and being here on this live event. We've got to wrap up, unfortunately. As I said with our other guests, okay. I know I think everybody cool. would like to to spend like 24 hours with each guest that we're having. So we'll have to do an expanded version next. Uh, but we Yeah, Laurie, Laurie, I just want to thank you for the work you're doing because you've helped so many. That's why I've sent so many to you because I trust you 100% and I love what you're doing. Well, thank you. We love what you're doing too. And thanks for keeping your part of the world held up. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. And everyone, right. uh, thank you for, for sharing time with Andrew Faka and myself. And we'll look forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care, Andrew. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yes, that's awesome. Well, lovely to hear from Andrew and all his wonderful work that he's doing. And definitely check it out at healerman.com. All right. Well, as we wrap up this last portion of the hour, we have our two um, uh, guests that are joining us for a personal message that whose names have been drawn and our prizes to give out. So we have Colleen F, Colleen F, and Jody, Jody S. Are going to get messages from grandmother. So let me connect with grandmother for Colleen first. Grandmother's showing you a picture of sort of an egg timer and it's just a very short timer. It's like turning over. And she says, you are at the perfect time child for you to put your plan in action. You are very careful with what you do and you have thought this through. And so if you imagine turning the egg timer over and saying, yes, I can do this, I believe you will have the results, especially in your working world we were speaking about, that you want and that you have been planning at least by the end of April in this coming year, 2020. It is a good plan, it is a large plan, and you are perfectly positioned for this change and this expanded audience that you will be interacting with. And so, be blessed, be blessed, my dearest one. It's like, awesome, let's go. <laughs> um, Jody, I will give a message to you as well from grandmother. Hmm. Grandmother says, you have promised yourself for the last five years that you will do something for yourself, more of what I would call a type of retreat or, or vacation or something where you can just pull away for two weeks, not one, but two. And you're saying, oh, I know, almost impossible, grandmother. <laughs> and so she says, you may not be able to implement this vacation for this year, but if you can start to plan it in the moon ahead in October, you will be able to pave that way to open up that time for yourself. Blessed be for all of the love and the commitment, the dedication that you have given to others in this last year and a half it has almost been a whirlwind that you cannot even remember but to carve out that time to plow a little bit of the road for yourself not only is important because it is well past due but it also shows other that others that they too can do the same and you have support from everyone who loves you here from beyond spirits veil relatives, ancestors, and also your own guides to say, this is the time for you. 
And so get that holiday planned. It is very important. And so be blessed. Awesome. Well, we'll have to get that holiday planned and find out where you're going and join you. We'll join you on some beach somewhere. That would be lovely. All right. Well, Stuart has drawn the three names for the prizes for this hour. And again, for those of you who are newer and joining in, um, the prizes are drawn hourly and we will send you an email on and we're looking forward to more of you joining us for you to please all spread the word about the wonderful uh, fun chats that we're having the wonderful guests that we're having the very real guests that we're having that hopefully will give you permission to trust yourselves more uh, by seeing it in action people are dedicating their lives their work their their passion to doing what they love and doing what they feel prompted and guided to do, like our wonderful guest Andrew was talking about. And it's important to, to trust your intuition and see where it prompts you to go um, next in your life as well. All right. So big hugs to everyone. Thank you for tuning in for this hour. Uh, please let others know to join us for next hour. I know that we're in different time zones. Make sure to think about who do I know that's in a different time zone and then you, you can let them know about uh, the wonderful opportunity to, to chat with us and to learn it might be breakfast in, in some areas of the world. And we're pretty connected out there these days, everyone. So pretty sure you'll probably have some friends and family members or colleagues who might enjoy jumping on and learning more about intuition and how straightforward it is to connect with them. All right. So thanks. We'll tune in in the next few minutes and we'll be talking about another topic all together. All right. Thanks again. Take care.